Welcome to part two of an introduction to JT6M. Here we pick up where we left off at the end of part one at section four. Section four, first time run and setup. There are some user configuration settings which need to be made before WSJT will run successfully and we will look at those now. When you run WSJT for the first time, hopefully you will be met with something that looks quite similar to this. WSJT will open with three windows. The first window is the main WSJT program itself. The second window is SpecJT and this program is the spectral analysis part of WSJT Suite. The third window is called the console. Some refer to this as the DOS box. This is effectively a list of all the audio devices that WSJT detects when it is run each time. If we now go back to WSJT main program and go to setup options, alternatively you can get to this by pressing F2. There is some user configuration data which we require making some changes to in order for WSJT to run smoothly. The first one that I'd like to draw your attention to is my call. In this you need to enter your station call sign. The second field is grid locator. In here you need to enter your six digit maidenhead locator. The following box is entitled ID interval. This is the interval in which WSJT will transmit your station ID, your call sign, in CW. If you enter the number zero, it will not send a CW ID at any stage. This number is in minutes, so if you enter 10, it will repeat your call sign once every 10 minutes, but only during a transmit session. It will not start WSJT and automatically key it just to send your call sign. The following field is PTT port. If you intend to operate a Vox based PTT system, please do not worry about this field except that the number in it should be zero. If you are operating a COM port based PTT system, you need to enter in your COM number. Please be aware that the current iteration of WSJT, R383, there is a bug in which WSJT will not currently key any devices attached to a COM port numbered COM10 or above. Only numbers 1 through 9 will work. The following field is audio in and the following field is audio out. These two fields we need to refer back to the console. This is my system. WSJT has been run and it has discovered nine devices which it is numbered 0 through 8. The first one, Microsoft Sound Mapper input, and the last one, Speakers Sound Max. It is from this list that you need to select the sound device you wish WSJT to operate, both the receive and transmit. You will see it has a listing. After audio device, there is a column entitled input channels followed by output channels. You therefore need to pick one device from input channels and that number, audio device number, you will put in to audio in. So in my example, I have selected number one, rig expert in USB audio codec. And here you can see audio in is number one. You then need to select your audio output device. Again, in my particular instance, I have selected six, rig expert out. And again, if we move back to the options box for WSJT, you will see that I have entered the number six representing the rig expert device for my audio out. At this stage, I recommend that we do not bother looking at rate in and rate out. They are not of great significance at this point. However, if you are interested in their functionality, 
please refer to the WSJT manual. Underneath these boxes is a section entitled Distance Unit. This is entirely personal choice and simply reflects miles or kilometres. When you enter later on the two radio here, their maiden head locator here, WSJT will automatically generate a distance, an azimuth and an elevation. The azimuth of course is of great use. It also produces something called hot A or hot B. Again, we will not bother pursuing this any further and I refer you back to the WSJT manual if you are interested in looking at this any further. Now we move across to the section entitled FSK441 stroke JT6M message templates. What you select here will be determined by where your station exists. North America or Europe for example. Taking Europe as the example we will select the report radio button and also the EU radio button. Once you have done this you need to press the reset defaults button here which will then automatically change the message templates to suit the correct format for the region that we're going to be operating in which of course in this instance is Europe. Finally there is a section on the right miscellaneous we do not need to be concerned with this at this time. Once we have made these adjustments to WSJT options we then simply exit this dialog. Please remember that any changes that you make to PTT port and also to audio in and audio out will not take effect until you shut down WSJT complete and restart the application. Please be aware that if any stage you attempt to, to shut down WSJT by closing the console or if you attempt to close the console in an effort to remove it from focus you will actually cause WSJT to stop functioning and for, the, for that program to crash. Furthermore, there is a chance, depending upon which operating system you use, you may also reset all the user parameters which you have just altered. Should you do this by accident, as I have done on a great many occasions, please go back to F2 within WSJT and ensure that your user parameters are all still correct before you continue. If you have to change them, remember it will be necessary to close WSJT again and then reopen the application before you continue. Now for a moment, let's turn our attentions to SpecJT. Take a look at the options menu and also at the screen grab. Please adjust your options in SpecJT to match those that you see in the screen grab. No further explanation will be given for this and please refer to the WSJT manual for further information. Now we've reached the end of section 4 and also the end of part 2. In part 3 we're going to explore the levels in WSJT and how to set them correctly. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.